another week of nuclear news. Let's see exactly what happened this week and what it means for this brand new industry in the early stages of massive, massive, massive adoption. Sprott Junior Uranium Miners ETF was down 1%. The S&P 500 over the last week was up about 1%. Normally when that happens, all you have to do is look at the macro situation, right? How tight is capital? Did Friday's jobs data take a jumbo rate cut off the table? Wall Street thinks so. So the market is now not expecting a massive rate cut in November, right? Remember how excited the market was about that 50 basis point rate cut? Now we're starting to see strong job activity. Maybe we're going to start seeing inflation. That would prevent them from cutting rates. So that's just going to make it harder and harder for these assets to get financed. Obviously, we saw what happened when this line went down a little bit. What do you think is going to happen ultimately when this line plummets down to much lower levels, right? It's a waiting game, right? And in the meantime, the value of the uranium in the ground is like a ball being held under water because there's a massive above ground supply crunch. There's nowhere near enough. And these assets just continue to accrue value. The more uranium is burned and the more demand for uranium skyrockets. So ultimately, these assets will be able to break free from the macro environment because the financial models people do on their minds are going to show how massively profitable they all are. That's going to allow these assets to ultimately decouple from purely interest rates. But right now, we've been risk off for so long and interest rates are still constrained, right? So just like clockwork, we see the market doubting interest rate cuts and early stage junior miners start to underperform, right? But we stay on top of the long-term game because that's honestly really what matters. Duke Energy introduces new rates for data centers as electricity demand soars. Electricity demand is soaring. Data centers are gobbling it up. Duke Energy is starting to charge them more, right? What this is saying is the electricity grid is constrained, right? So the Department of Energy is desperate to build nuclear reactors. Department of Energy proposes serial development approach for nuclear reactors as load growth and IRA boost valuations. Emulating the demand aggregation approach Boeing used for the 787 Dreamliner could create a committed order book of five to 10 new reactors of the same design and cut near-term deployment costs. So again, the world is desperate for nuclear reactors. Therefore, the world is desperate for uranium. Where's a lot of the demand for these reactors coming from? Data centers. Microsoft to spend $2.9 billion on Japanese data centers alone. Oracle to spend over $8 billion to build more data centers in Japan. And so like clockwork, Japan's biggest business lobby calls for nuclear power expansion. So the game theory of nuclear power is playing out. So obviously the SMR industry is going to boom. So who are the players in the SMR industry? Well, Sam Altman's open AI company looks to use data center providers beyond Microsoft could take up two gigawatts at Oracle site, right? Open AI is an AI company just gobbling up data center power. And so what company did the founder of open AI create? Oclo. Right, So on the news at Sam Altman's OpenAI was going to be using Oracle, Sam Altman's Oclo skyrocketed, right? Look at its price action in October, right? Because it's likely that Oracle and these other big tech companies are going to be turning to SMR companies like Oclo. And Oclo is a small modular reactor company that looks set up to provide nuclear energy to these massive data centers. Who's another one? New scale, right? US Exim Bank approves loan for Romanian SMR project. The board of directors at the US Export Import Bank has approved a final commitment for a $98 million loan for pre-project services needed for the development of a first of kind new scale small modular reactor in Romania, right? So it's hard enough to get a loan for a uranium mine. These SMRs are raising hundreds of millions of dollars of financing, right? And so we just touched on Japan, but it's happening all over the world. Private sector advances proposal for large scale nuclear power plant in Northern Alberta. So it's happening in Canada. Then over in Spain, on the one hand, Spain says they're phasing out nuclear, but with the other hand, they've signed contract with Framatome for nine uranium fuel assembly reloads out to 2035 and beyond. And so what does that ultimately mean for these early stage miners, right? It means value accrues, and it means mergers and acquisitions. Orono looking for potential acquisitions. CEO of Canada's uranium mining partner, Orono, says they're in monitoring mode 
for potential acquisitions, right? This happens when there's deep value and massive growth in an industry. So we're just getting started.